morning. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. It is crazy to think that it is time to think of back to school. I feel like it was just the 4th of July, but here we are getting ready to head back into the classrooms um, or to support our classrooms. Um, so today we're gonna highlight some of the um, new resources, the new activities and the new opportunities available from agriculture in the classroom. So real quickly, um, I'm curious who is joining us today? I can see, um, I can see a couple of people. Uh, but if you are a volunteer, just click on the icon or raise your hand uh, like you were going to ask a question. You can just um, click that on that. I'm just curious who's all here. Okay, if you are a teacher, likewise. Okay, I think we have mostly volunteers, which is great um, because this is really geared more towards the volunteers who are supporting in local grassroots um, efforts for agriculture in the classroom. So to get us started, since it is a lunch and learn, we have to talk about food. So in the chat, please type in, what is your favorite snack? This is a no judgment zone. Uh, so if your favorite snack is Cheetos, like mine is, feel free to type away. Excellent. Oh, love the cheese and crackers, popcorn. Mm, delish. Uh, lots of different snacks. All right. Oh, ice creams in there. So many good ones. So as you're typing, you can keep adding to your snack list, but I have another question for you, which is, do you know, can you list one or at least one or two ingredients that is in that food? Again, type it in the chat. Just Share what, if you know um, a few of the ingredients that are in that snack that you uh, love so much. Excellent. I see some see some snacks popping in. Some milk, grains, salt, more milk. I love the dairy theme that we have going here. I'm sort of waiting. Someone wrote beef jerky, so I feel like that well, that one's a little bit obvious. But for the the essence of time, um, I'm going to move to the next slide because um, if you were presenting this activity or engaging with with volunteers, um, you could ask, "What plants or animals do these ingredients come from? Uh, where are they produced? And are any of these grown or raised in our state?" Um, so. Let's like uh let's let's pick the someone wrote beef jerky. So for the sake of time, we'll say beef jerky. Um, so what plant or animal does the ingredient come from? Anyone? You can type it in the chat. Hopefully we landed on on beef, I'm hoping. Um, and it, beef is produced all over. And did it come from our state? That's a very specific answer, the flank steak of beef. Wonderful. <laughs> So beef is raised all over the United States to come from anywhere. But in thinking about the context of why we ag in the classroom or agriculture in the classroom, how did you know the answers to those questions? How did you know the ingredients to your favorite snack? How did you know if it was a plant or an animal? How did you know where it came from? Um, the chances are that you are what we would call an agriculturally literate person. And agricultural literacy is just the ability to explain where and how food and fiber and resources that we use every day are grown, processed, and distributed. And that is something, um, food and fiber is something we all interact with every single day. So agricultural literacy is, is pretty important. And this particular activity hopefully got you thinking about thinking of where you learned that knowledge from, of, of your ability to be an agriculturally literate person and explain um, that connection to your food and fiber. So if you liked that activity as a little bit of an icebreaker, this is where it came from. It's actually a lesson called, Where Does It Come From? It's an engagement activity from the National Agriculture in the Classroom Curriculum Matrix. And we're gonna jump into that a little bit later today. So. Now that we've kind of discovered, man, this, this whole agricultural literacy thing is pretty important. Uh, we're going to talk about what we're going to share today um, during our lunch and learn. 
Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about agriculture in the classroom 101. What are we? What do we do? What's new? How can you ag in the agriculture in the classroom? And then kind of a quick review of top takeaways. Now, throughout this whole piece, please keep cut those chat questions coming in the chat. And Wendy's going to help us out in monitoring that. So first off, what is agriculture in the classroom? Agriculture in the Classroom is a program that's been around since 1983. It was um, mandated uh, by the United States Department of Agriculture because we, in the 80s, were losing lots of farms and we were beginning to feel the, the effects of what happens when we have a voting and shopping population that is not directly connected to their food and the producers who grow and raise it. So agriculture in the classroom is all about growing agricultural understanding and awareness, not necessarily through agriculture classes like you would see in a career and technical education setting, but using core classes, reading, science, math, social studies, and introducing the context of agriculture uh, because it fits quite well with the history of our state, with the economics of our state, the geography of our state, and of course the culture, why people came to our state, um, and even states across the United States and the world. So the program has been around for a long time because agricultural literacy is important. We know that in our state, one out of nine jobs are directly related to agriculture. It comes out to almost 12% of all jobs in Wisconsin, uh, which is just a, a hair under a half a million jobs. It's a pretty big impact. Um, but more importantly, agricultural literacy is important because nine out of nine people are consumers of agricultural products and commodities. So if you happen to chew and eat, uh, and swallow three times a day, odds are it is with an agricultural product. Um, and that makes it this really a relevant context uh, to any classroom um, and any community. So how do we um, support this journey, this, this lessons in and how food grows and is raised and is distributed? Agriculture in the classroom in Wisconsin is housed, of course, by Wisconsin Farm Bureau. Uh, we were very fortunate in the, the early 1980s that our organization um, saw the value and the need to have this program in Wisconsin. So we've been the, um, the house of Ag in the Classroom since uh, the early 1980s. And we have kind of grown into um, supporting volunteers because of course we have 62 county farm bureaus that have agriculture in the classroom committees that are doing work at the local level. Um, uh, there's a wide variety, but we try to support at the state level by providing lessons and resources, um, providing grant and scholarship opportunities for both volunteers as well as classroom educators and providing teacher trainings um, and educator trainings and events. And we just finished up one last week and one on Monday. So we we have like to provide a, a wide variety of opportunities for teachers and volunteers to not only just see the lessons and learn lessons and activities, but really engage and experience um, what happens on a farm, what happens in a processing center, what happens um, kind of behind the scenes, the things we don't think about in, in agricultural production. So now that we've got a little bit of a background, what is up with back to school in the 2024-25 school year? We have a lot of, of new ideas and activities. So um, I'm gonna kind of, we're gonna do a quick run through of them. And um, please, again, if you have questions, throw those in the chat, um, even comments. I'd love to hear your feedback on some of the new resources. So we're gonna start out with a blank page. That's not actually supposed to be blank. Canva, Canva failed me again, but we'll see it in a minute. We have a new resource and a new project called Agriculture Across Wisconsin. This is a new map project that is uh, of, from the 2022 Census of Agriculture data. Um, it features the five geographic regions of Wisconsin, which is pretty important if you are in fourth grade. Um, it's also very telling uh, if you uh, live in Wisconsin, kind of identifying with what the region, what the geography, the climate looks like in your neighborhood. And this poster features 15 commodities as identified by the 2022 Census of Agriculture as the highest grossing sales uh, commodity in particular counties. So this is going to be available in a poster and a download. So this is what it looks like. Um, so each county features at least um, three. Some of them have four of their top commodities represented by icons on the map. And what I love about this is that it shows every single 
County, from Milwaukee to Bayfield to Grant and Marathon and in between. Um, and it really uh, just allows people to jump to to kind of visually see like what is in their county. And holy cow, there is agriculture, there is farming, there is food production in my county. And what is also cool about this is that um, we'll be able to, we're printing about 3,500 copies of this and we'll have those available for free to order as well as download on our website. So on the, the left is what you'll see. It's called, a, some tweaks are making this is, there's some final edits happening here, but the gist of the map is the same. Um, we're also gonna have a little bit of information on where the data came from and what makes Wisconsin agriculture so special as well as how you can learn more. Um, someday, we um, the phase two of this project is to make this a clickable interactive um, map. So we want to take some of the data from um, UW-Madison's Agriculture and Applied Economics Department and um, hopefully have this housed on our website so you can click on your county and be directly linked to um, the economic data specific to that county. So once that information is done, we'll be able to um, touch base or to, uh, to proceed with that project. Um, the other part of this is we're going to have an eight and a half by 11 downloadable map and we'll have a back to the map. So on the back of the map, this would be more of like an individual thing you could hand to a student or hand out or share at a fair or a community event. Um, it'll have information on the 15 commodities, as well as um, some cool thematic maps from Wisconsin, um, including uh, precipitation, snowfall, and average temperature. Um, and it's really cool if you just kind of lightly compare the, the three maps on the right to the main map and the geographic regions, you can kind of see that there is definitely um, there's some corresponding features that show up in the type of agriculture that's grown in each of the regions. So that is the mapping project. And we partnered with UW-Madison's uh, Department of Applied and Agricultural Economics. We had two graduating seniors who took all of the data from the 2022 census and created this map. So we're really fortunate to have had the help from Callie and Quinn, who have since graduated and moved on, but their, their UW-Madison legacy will last. So that's the new map project. Um, also on the line of agricultural facts and data is the 2024 What is Wisconsin Agriculture brochure. This used to be known as Wisconsin Agriculture Facts, um, but our intern, Madison Henderson, uh, went through some of those facts and datas and really tried to create a brochure that was engaging and had some fun facts some fun graphics. And um, she even included a matching activity on this, this next batch. So when you are looking for something to hand out, this is already available on our website as a download. Um, and we're bringing in more copies um, as we speak of the brochure so that we can make sure that the, the most accurate and relevant data is getting out there. So again, these are free um, and supported by our Wisconsin Found Bureau, Farm Bureau Foundation. Uh, that is who is uh, our, our biggest supporter and biggest partner in making this program work. So along the lines of communicating um, with Back to School, we are actually going to be launching a new website. The website is still the same address, not a new address. It's still wisagclassroom.org, um, but it's going to be housed and integrated into the National Agriculture in the Classroom um, program out of the out of Utah State. So we're excited to have more resources directly integrated into our website. Um, and it's going to allow us to have some cool monthly lessons, events, and features all in one place. So I'm excited to show you the prototype today. We are on pins and needles waiting for that last, um, the last go ahead from our web designer. I got to figure out why I can't get the link to work, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get there. I will just type it in manually. So with the new, uh, with the new website, um, it, some things will change and I want to point those out really quickly today, uh, because it is, it will be a little bit of a change. Um, again, there's a couple of updates that have to happen yet on this new site, but it, the layout's pretty pretty well the same. So I'm going to just reshare our website link here. It actually popped up, so oh, we're wonderful. seeing it right now. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. That's amazing. I'm hoping that just does it. So as you can see, the, the landing page doesn't look terribly different, but we have reorganized some things so that uh, we have an educator center, whether you are a classroom educator or a volunteer educator, all of the resources are in one spot. They drop down, 
the curriculum matrix links to 492 lessons that have been vetted uh, and curated by the National Center for Agricultural Literacy, as well as um, ideas for books and less uh, resources and activities. Um, we will also still continue to feature the Wisconsin lesson plans that are really specific to our state. Um, and then we are, I'm really excited about the teaching resources. Um, so this is just kind of a one-stop shop where you can find all of the programs that help support agricultural literacy in your classroom. So the Adopt-A-Cow program, um, Ag Mags, which is featured by American Farm Bureau Foundation. There's some free digital um, lessons. Um, some of these were, were in our um, old website, but we're also going to be linking to a couple of things like Farm Wisconsin Discovery Center, Food and Farm Exploration. So we want this to be a place that um, a volunteer or teacher can come to find some of those third-party resources that aren't necessarily from Ag in the Classroom, but definitely support the work um, and are accurate um, and, meet, and up to our standards. So that is the teach, teaching resources. Um, and the other fun thing is um, course topics and themes for learning. This is something if you are going into a, a science class or you have a teacher who's asking why is this or how is this relevant? Um, this is a portion place on our website where you can just find those themes and they're already curated lessons or like a little group. So it's not a course outline, but it's just more, it's, it's organizing the way that agriculture can integrate into these specific topics and courses. So with the new website, um, we will still have our programs, the essay contests, the trainings and workshops. Um, all of our awards and grants will be in one spot. And Wisconsin agriculture will be in one spot as well. Um, we click on commodity facts. Uh, we, these are not new graphics. Rather, this is the, the phase two of the project. We are working to build out more specific resources for each of Wisconsin's commodities so that we have a really great hub for all educators to come and quickly find books, ideas, um, and other resources around all of the many unique Wisconsin crops and commodities. So we're excited to get this launched, um, but one additional thing I wanna point out is that uh, some of the resources that I've shared um, are still available, but our ordering system is gonna look a little bit different. Um, so we will no longer be selling the Ag Mags and Accurate Ag Books. Those are all still available from American Farm Bureau Foundation. Uh, we're really gonna focus our efforts on free materials that we can share um, very readily with classrooms and with, with volunteers. So all of the um, free materials are going to be on just a simple request form. Uh, but what we're really excited about is that we're going to be able to rotate in different things throughout the year. Uh, so, if, for example, when that map launches, the, the um, agriculture across Wisconsin, go ahead and order yours right away because um, we may or may not keep those in stock. Our goal is to keep things fresh and relevant and we want um, people coming back to see what's new and exciting um, as the year goes on. So if you see it, go ahead and request it because uh, they, they will go quickly. All right. So that's the website. That's a It's been a, a project in the making for quite some time. And uh, we're excited to be able to launch that in the very near future. Like I said, it's any day waiting on our web designer. Just got to get back to my, there we go, back to my lesson. So are there any questions, comments? Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rolling here. Um, one thing that is, should be noted, since most everybody has identified as a volunteer or a, a, w, a Wisconsin Farm Bureau member, um, some of the volunteer information that used to be housed on wisagclassroom.org is already been moved to the WFBF webpage under programs. So it's only volunteer specific things. So if you're a county ag in the classroom coordinator, all of that really specific information is now on the Farm Bureau webpage, but it is going to be linked to the Ag in the Classroom page. So if you don't remember, we'll still get to where you need to be. Um, but the monthly updates and program opportunities specifically, again, for County Farm Bureaus is all going to be on our Farm Bureau webpage, um, including upcoming opportunities. All right. So if you're looking at WFBF.com, um, it's under programs and that will click down to Ag in the Classroom. You do have to hold the cursor over for just a moment to let it um, show up and, and go to where you're, where you're linking to. So we're very excited, very fortunate to have that ability to really 
help our Farm Bureau volunteers find those resources very easily. All right. And the last really big announcement, um, and people are, of course, our top resources without volunteers and teachers, we wouldn't have a program. Um, but we have kicked off a brand new educator ambassador team program. These four educators were selected. Um, they have all had past experience with agriculture in the classroom through grants, trainings, um, outstanding teacher of the year. Um, and we chose four teachers who are going to help us connect with other teachers. So they're going to be working to connect at teacher events such as the Wisconsin Conference for Social Studies conference in March. We'll have someone um, doing a workshop and helping helping man the booth space there. Um, someone at the Wisconsin Wisconsin Science Teachers Association. Um, and we've, we're kind of cultivating a list where teachers really want to talk to other teachers or administrators want to talk to teachers about what um, that context of agriculture has done for their students, done for their learning, and how they're still meeting their required academic standards. Um, and of course, the, the reading minutes and all the things. So we are really, really excited to have this group of teachers uh, to, to continue to build our relationships with schools and communities. So I just want to point out, if you have one of these teachers in your district or your county, they would love to talk to you um, and work with volunteers, every single one of them. Um, so our teachers in the new program include Josh Gonzalez, who is at River Trail Elementary in Milwaukee. They are an agriculture focus school. Uh, he's a second grade teacher and just does awesome things. And then we have Travis Sprague, who is an agriculture teacher at Sun Prairie and uh, one of the Sun Prairie Middle Schools, he is he actually really wants to work with Dane County. So if at Dane County, Columbia County, if you're on, this is your guy. He is super excited. Emily Camps is from Grant County, and she has actually already signed up to be an Ag in the Classroom volunteer in addition to teaching in her classroom. So we're, she's also our Outstanding Teacher of the Year. And then we have Mary Cooper, who is from Richland Center, and she is a longtime supporter of agriculture in the classroom and uses a ton of resources. Um, and, and these teachers are just fantastic um, advocates for, for agriculture as a context, but also they are a wealth of information about what teachers are looking for when you approach a school or if you're trying to um, share an activity or invite someone to a day on the farm. Um, they are really valuable insights. So if you ever get into a sticky situation where you're like, I just don't know how to connect, um, we have this great sounding board of, of team members who can help us navigate that education world a little bit, uh, a little bit more smoothly, hopefully. So very exciting to kick that team off. All right. So I gave you a very, very quick and dirty overview of some of the new things coming up, um, but we still have more opportunities that are uh, ready for our volunteers. So how can you agriculture in the classroom this year? And it's not really a verb, but we're making it one because it's kind of fun. Um, but the biggest, most giant opportunity to land at our footsteps by far, uh, since I've been here in the last three years or two years is the Wisconsin Science Festival. The Wisconsin Science Festival is a week long celebration of science in Wisconsin, and it's headed up by the U University of Wisconsin Madison Discovery Center um, and a few other folks. Um, but this, they, they choose an annual theme. Um, last year's theme was glass, and this year's theme is agriculture. And if you have ever been looking, for a reason, an opportunity to connect with a school or a library or, or shout out uh, agricultural literacy in a bigger way, this is 100% the time. This is, this, this is made for Ag in the Classroom. So there are lots of ways to get involved. Um, first off, they're looking for volunteers. Um, and I will also be looking for volunteers as we do some in-person events at UW-Madison in October, uh, as well as on the square um, the, week, the week of the Science Festival, which is October 14th through the 20th. Um, the thing about the Science Festival that's also unique is that they are they take that Wisconsin idea of stretching out into communities, and they are sending out 2,000 science in a bag kits to local libraries across Wisconsin. Um, and all of those libraries who receive those kits will be participating in some way, shape or form. But many of them are looking for experts to bring in. Um, Ag in the Classroom volunteers really fit the bill. So we're working hard with our um, 
the Department of Public Instruction to match the libraries, the community libraries who would like a volunteer or are, are in need of some ideas with the farm bureaus who have Ag in the Classroom programs. Um, so we're really excited to offer this opportunity to volunteers who are looking for a new activity or an, a, a kind of an easy button to get in with, um, with places where they can actually promote and educate about agriculture. So um, the October 14th through the 20th, that's our time to shine, um, but it's also an opportunity to um, say yes to being a host to an event or to participating in events or even just being available for a library to reach out to you. So if you have not already um, had the opportunity to check the website, you can sign up and learn more about these programs at um, wfbf.com. And I'm going to show you where that is because it's this is like that big of a deal. We're very excited about this opportunity and we have been listed as a presenting partner. So we're getting a lot of exposure, a lot of enthusiasm about agriculture, and a lot of questions too. Um, so we hope that you can, um, whether you're your county's Ag in the Classroom chair or not, um, please sign up. So it would be under programs at wfbf.com. Kind of hold your cursor over Ag in the Classroom, um, and then down to county leader resources, and that is our, our science festival page. So this is where we've got some ideas. We've already picked out a book um, and three really easy to implement activities that are STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics related. Um, and we have a survey that you can complete um, that basically asks, do you want to participate? How do you want to participate? Can we contact you? Um, so this is pretty a, a pretty crucial piece because we're going to start playing matchmaker with those community libraries within the next um, two to three weeks. So we want to be able to share out that list of libraries with our Ag in the Classroom volunteers in early September uh, so that we can start getting dates on calendars um, and, of course, getting everyone set for the Science Festival. So um, that leads into um, the second part of this, which is training for the Science Festival. Um, the week of the final week of September, we're looking at Friday, September 27th. Um, we plan to host a training throughout the state of Wisconsin to talk about um, what to expect in the library, how to prepare, how to plan. We're going to do the activities uh, so you get a chance to do the hands-on pieces, make the ice cream, do the rain, uh, the milk fireworks, the cranberry bounce, um, all very simple activities um, that, that match with one of our former books of the year right this very minute by Liesl Detlefson. So it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity. I know that the details seem a little fuzzy, but we're asking you right now to just consider, can you say yes to partnering? Um, and is this something that your County Farm Bureau, your Promotion and Education Committee, your Ag in the Classroom Committee, um, can they be a part of? And of course, if you have questions or need more information, please contact myself, um, contact Wendy, contact Melissa, um, and Mandy, because we're all working on this um, to really um, put a great put forward, put forward for agriculture and, and hopefully open a door that's gonna stay open um, to continue to have conversations and share our lessons and resources uh, regarding agriculture and, and growing that understanding and knowledge of where food and fiber come from. So it's a big, big push. I know it comes at probably uh, not a great time of year because there's harvest, it's back to school, uh, it's end of year membership if you're concerned uh, about that, which everyone, we all, we all rely on members. So um, we didn't pick the dates, Wisconsin Science Festival did, but um, there's also a, a really great opportunity because October 12th is National uh, Farmer Appreciation Day. So you can do a pre-event, we'll, we'll get those in there too. So there's so many ways that you can connect with the Science Festival. And we really want agriculture to shine. We, we want us telling the story of what we do on our farms and what we do um, in our processing facilities and all of the entities that connect agriculture and allow us to eat and chew and swallow three times a day. Um, so we, we need volunteers and we need your, your help in, in being the teller of that narrative and really owning agriculture. Um, by people who are agriculture. So 
Um, if I, if, if I've gone on too far, I just, I really hope you walk away with, man, this science festival sounds like a great opportunity. I need to learn more. That's all I'm asking here. So uh, again, throw those uh, questions in the chat, but we're so excited. Um, there's so much enthusiasm and they even created this beautiful logo um, with uh, all of Wisconsin's agriculture represented um, from dairy to aquaculture, the three sisters, corn, beans, and pumpkins, and of course the pollinators. So uh, we've got lots to, lots to boom from there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I will uh, let that go because there's also another big kickoff happening. Um, I would first of all like to thank every single county who supported the bulk book order. We um, sorted and sent out almost uh, 750 copies of the book of the year, my grandpa, my tree, and me. And um, this book, along with those resources, uh, we, we're just so grateful that uh, we have that county support and that interest and enthusiasm for getting accurate agriculture books into classrooms and libraries. And this is definitely one of them. So this is the 2024 book of the year uh, from American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture and of course, Wisconsin Agriculture in the Classroom. If you haven't had a chance to read it, it's an adorable book um, that talks about the growing pecans. Pecans in Wisconsin doesn't necessarily jive with one of our biggest industries, but we do grow a lot of trees that are used for agriculture in the state. And the book of the year serves as that inspiration for our fourth and fifth grade essay topic, which is shaping up to be um, a Wisconsin tree and me, how trees grow food and fiber. So it is not an essay contest about growing pecans. It is an opportunity for students and classrooms to explore the different foods and the different fibers that we get from trees. So cherries, apples, maple syrup, wood, um, horticulture, and landscaping. There's so many ways that trees impact our lives and contribute to our state's agricultural industry. Uh, so we're excited to bring forth this topic um, in this book. So this year's essay contest will be due April 15th. And um, more details are still being pulled together. We have a group of teachers who are working on uh, reviewing the rubric and some of the prompts. We are planning to also do a virtual kickoff with uh, what I would like to call the queen of the essay contest, uh, which is a teacher. Her name is Carmen DeCoke, and she's a fourth grade teacher in Janesville. And she has created the recipe on how to write an agricultural essay. And so we'll be sharing that as a resource for teachers, um, along with doing a bigger push and promotion for the kickoff of the essay contest. So that will be um, coming, more details will be coming out later in August um, as that contest is, we wanna, wanna get those save the dates out for teachers and thinking about it, but they're not gonna be jumping into writing that essay immediately when school starts. So we'll, we'll get those resources ready to roll, uh, but we definitely wanna get that due date and the save the dates out to our classrooms and teachers. All right, so I just went through a lot of new programs and a lot of ideas. Are there any questions out there? I just wanna make sure I'm not going too fast or you're, you're, I'm missing anything in the chat. We're good? Okay. All right, so real quickly, we're gonna wrap up today by going through some easy button agricultural literacy activities and ideas. And um, as we move into, like I said, Wisconsin Science Festival is a great, 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 great opportunity to be connected in your community and really talk about agriculture as um, its relevancy and the importance of science in all aspects of ag. <clears throat> we might not all get the, the same audience. So we put together a couple of just quick and easy ideas on how you can share your knowledge um, of about agriculture, as well as really engage with students and teachers of all ages. So I'm calling it easy button ideas. So the first one, um, we have this incredible collection of accurate agriculture books. Uh, we've been so fortunate for many, many years to have a book of the year. Uh, if you are one of those people who collect, you probably have quite the collection now. Um, but teachers are asking for more accurate books about agriculture. More importantly, they're looking for books that um, farmers and people in the agriculture industry 
have put their stamp of approval on. And that list really lives um, with Feeding Minds Press and the American Foundation for Agriculture, which is the Wisconsin or American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture. They have books, they have educator guides. Um, they also have some of the accurate agriculture readers or magazines, ag mags, as you know. Them. Um, but one of the easiest ways to teach about agriculture is to read a book, review the book with an activity or questions, and then reflect, which is asking a student or asking a teacher or a story hour, like, what are some ways that you're connected to agriculture? And what all you're looking for is that they're able to um, if they even if they remember that food is agriculture, it is 100% a win. So read, review, reflect with an accurate agriculture book, uh, which you can do with this year's book of the year or uh, many of the books that have come come before this year's book. Another super easy idea is be a badger, which is the Ag Badging Field Guide. This uh, Ag Badging Field Guide, I had one here, but it walked away because I was just at my county fair or my uh, community fair. And I share this with everyone. The Ag Badging Field Guide is aligned to science standards. And it's five sections with five really easy activities to get students thinking about agriculture. And the best part is, is that they do not, it does not require any internet. This is completely a wireless book that you can request for free from Wisconsin Agriculture in the Classroom um, to help lead activities and ideas. Um, and in total transparency, I'm a clover bud leader for our 4-H group. And one of the activities we did with our clover buds this year was a pollinator hotel that came from the Ag Badging Field Guide. So if you come to the Alto Fair, uh, you will see about 20 pollinator hotels that were made from straws, uh, straws and empty water bottles. Um, very, very easy materials to use, but we read the book, The Bee Man. We made our pollinator houses and it was just an opportunity for our kids to do something fun, something hands-on. And they got to use scissors. It was a big deal. But um, but they also went out and hung up their pollinator hotels and some of them actually came to the fair with um, some honeycomb in them. So we'll see how that goes. But Ag Badging Field Guide, you re request that from us. The materials, dollar store materials, very easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Another easy button idea is the curriculum matrix. This is an online resource um, that you can search, um, but I went ahead and pulled out some really, I think, relevant lessons. The first one is called My Farm Web, and it's um, pictures that you cut out and kids connect with string to match the item grown on the farm or raised on the farm with the product that they use at home or buy at the grocery store or put in their car tank, whatever it might be. Um, so my farm web, it's um, available in a couple different grade levels. Very, very easy to implement. Um, it's a great activity to use if you're reviewing or reflecting from a day on the farm. Um, and we'll 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 talk more about that at the end of the presentation. But um, another um, really fun activity is called high tech farming timeline. This is an integration into history, and basically, it's uh, again. You, they have the pictures of the technology and the year. You cut it out and the students create a matching game. So it's a, a great, great, um, easy plug into a history activity. Or if you are invited to your historical society, I know that they're, they're always looking for presenters. This is an awesome activity to take because all you do is print it off and cut it out and the directions are right there for you. Um, the last the last um, curriculum matrix activity that I think is is really relevant. You probably have heard of it, but it's the many hats of a farmer. Um, and it's just talking about all of the careers and all of the skills that a farmer has to have in order to do their job of caring for animals and raising um, raising um, healthy crops and food. So, uh, lots of different ideas, but uh, we pulled these specific ones out because they are just very plug and play to a lot of the places where. Um, we get invited as Ag in the Classroom volunteers um, and, and the places where we want to go. So we it's really nice to approach a historical society and say, hey, we have this great agriculture activity. Can we come in? Um, or your fair or your whoever it might be. Um, bringing an idea to your intended audience is always a lot easier than saying, hey, we have all these resources. What do you need? So um, come with an idea. And there are plenty of ideas in the matrix. All right. Um, adopt a classroom. It's the spinoff of adopt a cow or adopt a, a bunny, whatever it might be. Um, but 
a great way to grow a relationship and and build trust um, and and recognition with any school or any teacher is to start building that connection by sharing resources with teachers. So passing on newsletters or tagging people on social media. If you see a great lesson on and posted by Egg in the Classroom, please tag a teacher that you know, tag a parent that you know. Um, also continue to email teachers. Um, side note on email, uh, email gets tough at the school level because of security. So um, don't just rely on email as your only form of communication. Be sure to, to reach out and follow up, even if it's giving a call to the school to that one teacher you might know or sending a follow-up letter or um, just make sure that they uh, know if you're emailing them that it's not going to their junk mail because um, school email security is very, very high. So um, make sure you're having some, some conversation along with sending an email. Uh, again, tag teachers on social media for relevant content. Um, you can send the books and the articles along that way. There's always uh, great articles. I came across one. It's called The Importance of Stupidity in Scientific Research. Um, and it really talks about how we all need to feel stupid in order for science to work correctly. Um, not necessarily a direct link to agriculture, but I think it's very, very relevant information that a teacher would want to read. Um, watch for that. We'll be posting that later later this week on our social page. But um, just sharing those those cool local scientific connections or agriculture connections or economic connections um, or literacy. There's there's so many so many places where we see agriculture um, and it's presented to us because we are an agriculture audience that that teachers might be missing. So feel free to to share and um, to tag and. And make sure that uh, we're just keeping up that dialogue and providing resources, um, even when we don't necessarily need them to write an essay or to let us in their classroom. Just maintain that connection um, by just sharing things that are interesting and relevant to agriculture. All right. So those easy button ideas, again, follow us on Facebook. Uh, we will be posting ideas and activities um, every month. Um, you can also find it on our website. Um, but please follow us. This is how you're going to get the latest and greatest. We're also on Instagram. I forgot to put the um, Instagram link on here, but it's at with Ag in the Classroom on Instagram as well. So please follow us. Um, we'll put reminders to check your inbox to get our newsletter, which is the seedling. <clears throat> and for county coordinators, we do send out a very specific um, email for coordinators every single month. Um, Usually the first week of the month, I'm going to be on vacation after this, so I'm going to try to get it out yet. Um, but all of the information um, is on our website. So you can find the seedling, which is kind of our general um, monthly update with teacher features, grant ideas, awards, all the all the things Ag in the Classroom, um, as well as that county coordinator email, which is found under our Wisconsin Farm Bureau website because it is a very specific volunteer-focused email um, and that has lots of information, nothing secret, it's not hidden. It's just very specific to um, what's happening at the county level. All right. So if all of this still seems like a lot, you can start uh, supporting agricultural literacy by finding an existing event. And there are plenty of them that are out there. Um, so if you're ever looking for just a way to get involved and support, but maybe not be your county lead. Um, there are lots of ideas. There's lots of Food for America programs that happen with FFA chapters in Wisconsin, which is basically a Food for America program put on, uh, or pardon me, an agriculture in the classroom type program put on by high school students and middle school students to their peers. Um, and last year, those programs reached about 60,000 students and community members statewide. So uh, if you don't want to reinvent the wheel, find your local FFA chapter and learn and, and have that conversation about what Food for America looks like and how you can support. Um, there's tons of county fairs that have education areas. World Dairy Expo is always looking for volunteers for school tours. In fact, they're looking right now. So head over to that website if you are going to be in Madison or want a free ticket to World Dairy Expo. Um, Wisconsin State Fair is happening, uh, always looking for volunteers, lots of education opportunities, House of Moo, the Birthing Barn, Discoveries, the Ag Discovery Day, which is in, in May each year, um, and all of the other 
um, places. We're fortunate to have two centers devoted just to agricultural literacy in Wisconsin at Farm Wisconsin Discovery Center, as well as the Food and Farm Exploration Center. Um, they're both uh, definitely uh, looking for volunteers and there's lots of ways that you can engage and get involved. Um, and what I love about these is usually someone else already has them planned and you just have to show up and lend your expertise and your time and your talent. All right, um, one last super exciting opportunity. Um, we are, uh, as a central region, hosting the National Agriculture in the Classroom Conference in 2025. So mark your calendars. If you would like to learn more about agriculture in the classroom, go on some great agricultural tours. Um, just see and hear and learn what other farm bureaus, other ag literacy organizations and other states are doing uh, to connect students and teachers with food and fiber and grow awareness and understanding of agriculture. Mark your calendars for the National Agriculture in the Classroom Conference. It's happening in Minneapolis, Minnesota, June 24th through the 26th. Uh, we hope to bring a slew of people from Wisconsin uh, to really get everyone excited, energized, and uh, ready to, to grow our, our literacy efforts here in our state. So we hope you can come. It's a conference for teachers as well as volunteers, um, and there are scholarships. So please watch your e-news and watch social media and listen to your county coordinators when they give those updates. Um, because there are going to be a lot of scholarship opportunities that can get you um, free registration and, and cover some of those expenses in going to that conference. So with that, um, any quick questions that anyone has? Uh, I really appreciate everyone hanging with us today and learning a little bit more about what's going on with the Agriculture in the Classroom program. Um, and just kind of a quick review of the top takeaways that I hope to take away from today from our Lunch and Learn is that agricultural literacy is important for all people, not just teachers, not just volunteers. If you eat, if you are a consumer, it is important to you. Uh, agriculture in the Classroom offers free resources and trainings that support you, whether you are a teacher or a volunteer. Um, we want to make sure that you have the tools in the toolbox, um, no matter who your audience is. Um, we do have some pretty ASAP opportunities, which is the Wisconsin Science Festival. So please check that out. Fill out the survey uh, at WFBF.com under programs and ag in the classroom. Also, uh, your books, if you are part of the counties who ordered books through the bulk book order, those books are going to be um, coming your way very, very soon, along with additional resources for the essay contest. And last but not least, um, please remember that agriculture in the classroom is as big or as small as you make it. Um, baby steps are a great way to get engaged um, and doing just that one, one percent more, one more thing each year is how we consistently and steadily grow this really, I think, very vital program um, as we see more and more people entering into education um, and really the workforce who are not engaged at all with agriculture. And I think that you can very easily uh, scroll through your social media and see the memes, see the, the headlines of our the desperate need to help people understand who the people are growing and producing their food, um, but also where it's coming from. Um, there's a lot of misinformation. So our goal, our mission is to increase awareness and understanding of agriculture as it impacts our daily lives. So um, you can start as big or as small as you like, uh, but we just hope that you choose to engage and choose to get involved in some way, shape, or form. So with that, I would like to say thank you. This is my contact information. Um, that is me in a cranberry bed last year. If you've never done that, I highly recommend it. But uh, you can always reach out to me through LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, as well as email and phone. So um, I really do appreciate your time with us today. And um, please reach out with any questions. And I really hope to see you all uh, participate in the Science Festival. I'm just gonna give it one more push. Um, and, and say thank you. So with that, 